What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. First and foremost, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. And today I'm here with my husband. You mean first and foremost, <laughs> here's my husband. And I hope you guys are still living. <laughs> what are we here for today, love? One second. Uh -huh. um, apparently, strep has been going around. Um, like three of my friends got it, a bunch of people at your work got it. A bunch of people that we know that they work with got it. I could have, so, I could have introed strep. Why didn't you just tell me that's where we're going? I got it. Hey guys, it's getting here. Trying to shoot videos while I got strep. <laughs> Do the people want to hear me talk like this? <laughs> that was you. <laughs> Do the cough you do now that you've had stress. No. Do the cough, do the stress cough. The point is, <laughs> the point is, stay safe out there and don't go around kissing random Dude, people. Just, which is incidentally not how I got strep. That's we what don't I'm know how I got strep. The new strep, like, because you know we went through COVID, people were washing their hands a ton. Yeah. But like people have just stopped doing that as much. I guess. And it's spreading things that get spread when you don't wash your hands. Yeah. And in Vegas, it's hot, but not very wet. So if you cough on something, it's there, dude, for a long time. So stay away from strep. Don't get it like I did for three weeks. Yep. Um, I, I kind of thought I was like an anomaly. And then my friend just like had strep. And it was so funny to watch the progression of her Instagram stories. Cause she was like, oh, I don't, I don't really feel good. I don't know why I'm just so tired. Yeah. And she was like, oh my God, I have like the worst migraine and my throat kind of hurts. And then she was like, oh man, I have a fever. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, you're, like, oh, and you're just like, strep. Today, we are here to watch Casual Geographic. Mm -hmm. The title of this is how a tiny cat dog took over the world. I don't know what a nice. cat dog is, but there's a fox on the screen, so I'm assuming that's what he's talking cat about. Cat dog, cat dog. Get rid of the world with a little cat dog. It's a cat on one side, mm -hmm. a tube, and a dog on the other. So it's like a bag taxidermy project? It is like cat dog. Thank you very much. <laughs> Taxidermy. Taxidermy was inspired by cat dog, probably. I don't know what you're talking. You're referencing something, and I don't know what it is. Then be left out, Skitten. The rest of us know. Okay. Cool. What does the fox say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what does the fox say? <laughs> what does the oh, fox, fox say? Like really <laughs> That's cute. Hi, Cleo. That's cute. Those are some cute ass foxes. All right, pop quiz. What is the most widespread carnivore on earth? If I had to guess the widespread carnivore, I would say dogs. My first Bears. guess. Okay. Of all of those animals in the world, which one managed to spread further and thrive in more places than any other? This yeah. isn't rhetorical, by the way. Comment your answer. I'm actually curious. Yeah. All votes in? I would okay, say dogs. Good. It's the red fox. I don't know where yeah. it happened, but somewhere in the history of Earth, there was a subplot where the fox took over the world, and they have not let up since. <laughs> Today, there's about 23 flavors of fox seasoning this big ball of dirty water, really? with well over 40 subspecies on their roster. And they are everywhere. From griefing gardens in the suburbs, to pickpocketing polar bears in the north, to murking <laughs> koalas in Australia, oh. trust and believe we gonna get to that. You can find some Vulpes variant virtually anywhere in the world that isn't the that ocean or Antarctica. And the biggest flex of the foxes is the red fox. Despite being in the weight class of a small dog, no other mammalian carnivore owns more real estate. And even though they're invited to the carnivore cookout, technically they're omnivores, which means they eat, and I do not say this lightly, everything. Rabbits, rodents, <laughs> birds, frogs, worms, fish, crabs, clams, insects, lizards, eggs, fruits, plants, garbage, cat food, dog food, carry on, and I don't mean the bag, and actual feces. Literally oh, their whole meal plan is, it. if it doesn't kill them first, they'll eat it. Foxes are also <laughs> able to exploit the Earth's magnetic fields in order to catch bodies. You've probably seen this thing foxes what? do where they'll swan dive into a pile of snow. So cute. 
It's called mousing, and foxes are able to use magnetic fields as this kind of internal GPS, and they cross-reference that with a broken sense of hearing to figure out exactly where their target is and exactly where to land a critical hit. Foxes pretty much have a real-life wall hack, and they're one of the few animals to hunt like this. They're also smart enough to memorize the migration patterns of certain species of birds, meaning they know the exact time to pull up for free and easy protein. Foxes also manage to figure out the same with some turtles, since timing it right after they lay their eggs and peace out means low effort, so call that over easy. And arguably, no place has foxed around and found out more than Australia. Cause way back in the 1800s, Europeans airdropped red foxes to the land down under for the sport of fox hunting. Why? Evidently, the foxes weren't about to go down like that. To the point where a couple years ago, it's estimated that over 7 million foxes exist in Australia as a perpetual Get middle finger the to the settlers that thought they did light work. Some unhinged foxes even learned to climb trees in order to snatch baby koalas and sugar gliders. Damn. Proving that any animal that gets introduced to Australia will inevitably become a problem. <laughs> and now, foxes and feral cats are like the Kobe and Shaq of putting native Australian animals on a shirt. That ability to adapt means foxes are one of the very few predators that do better in cities. Mm. Why is he standing there like that? Bro, he looks threatening <laughs> like, as hell. It's like, these are my cars now. <laughs> I've commandeered these for Fox Nation. He's like, yeah, you better walk away. <laughs> Call an Uber, nigga. You're not taking your car home. <laughs> not as well. Not almost as well. No. Better. Today, the highest density of foxes living in Britain are shacking it up in the city. In some nice. neighborhoods, you'll find twice as many fox families than you would in the countryside, and 200 times as many than in some desolate moors. Moor. A boggy area, especially one that is peaty, and dominated by grasses and sedges. Hmm. The fuck is a sedge? What is peat? Yeah. These are all things that I I live in the desert. We have cactuses. Peat is like a type of gravel. And tumbleweeds. Yeah, peat is like a type of gravel. I didn't know that. No, I didn't know I what said peat tumbleweed. is. That's what people call them sometimes. It's tumbleweeds. You know what? We're gonna just move on from that. <laughs> but you going back to read this is why I love you. And even though they get straight up bullied by bigger canines, foxes don't rely on a pack structure the same way wolves so do. And they have enough pretty privilege to dodge the smoke everyone seems to have for coyotes. It also helps that they're nocturnal and move like introverts. Mama right. Fox will go out of her way to clean the den area so well that the average person can walk right past it and not even realize there's a whole family underground. And just like with birds, foxes will study and memorize the schedule of humans in the area and only come out when it's least active. They'll wow. even take advantage of garbage schedules so they know exactly when to come root through your trash. And they'll even take note of what times you often feed your pets so that they can steal their shit. <laughs> and you may never even notice. Depending on where you live, That's you can probably cute. count on one hand how many foxes you've seen in your neighborhood, even if you've lived around them your entire life. I mean, I live in Vegas. Yeah, so we do have no coyotes foxes. out here, though. We do have coyotes. Yeah, we have coyotes. They're a lot different than the foxes. <laughs> they're, they're the, uh, everything he just named that make them like, uh, uh, what's that guy? Meghan Markle? What? Meghan Markle. That's the guy's the girl's name, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Remember he tweeted out or texted them, the family group chat? She doesn't take up much space. She doesn't eat much. That's what he described that they were doing. Staying out of the way, memorizing patterns. So when we go in the you, kitchen when you guys aren't there. You have to. <laughs> you can't just say Meghan Markle. You have to provide the context. But I'm just saying, everything they do like Meghan Markle, oh coyotes don't do. They don't give a fuck about you at all. They stay right on the perimeter where you live at. And when they come in, you know they're coming. They announce it. Hey, we're about to eat your shit. And they come and eat your shit. Then they leave. It's annoying. But it's not as common of a problem as you would think it is. Like Not for us, but for the guys that live out in the... But people live in Vegas. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, if you live on live the mountain, though... In the mountain. You live in the mountain. That's your own stupid fault. To be fair, you are in their living room. Shout like, out to Nico. All right, let's do it. And lucky for them, they happen to be just cute enough to not have to worry about getting their existence nuked like some of their predators. Speaking of which, let's talk about the many enemies of the fox. Okay. You got wolves, coyotes, cougars, lynxes, birds of prey, bears, wolverines, birds cars, and many, many more. Because the one bad thing about being a fox is everything on the census either wants to eat you or wants to kill you because you eat the same things. In fact, the first and sometimes last enemy they'll make is their family. Damn. Fox cubs will fight their siblings off rip in order to establish a hierarchy. And it's not the cute Disney play fighting I used to think it was. 20% of fox kids born will never leave the den. Oh it's just straight God. violence out the womb. I can't even say it's on site since baby foxes live the Helen Keller experience for the first two weeks of their life. What? Lucky for them, foxes often mate for life and bring up the kids together. I mentioned this in the Father's Day episode last video, but mm -hmm. fox fathers will hide food around the den in these little pantries in order to teach his kids how to find food for themselves. Mm -hmm. I want you to keep that pantry thing in mind. We're going to come back to that. Fox cubs okay. have a couple 
couple months of a grace period before they have to go out and figure out life on their own. Lucky for them, they're part of the most unfairly versatile group of animals you'll ever see. Like, did you know foxes can climb trees? No, I didn't mean yes. like fully scale that jump. I did not The gray know fox that. has been seen ascending over 70 feet up into a tree, and they're one of the few foxes that flex retractable claws, which allows huh. gray foxes to avoid conflict with predators like coyotes. Go ahead and ask cheetahs how important that is. <laughs> Tree climbing only proves that foxes are just cat software marrying dog hardware. A cat dog, if you will. And it shows that there isn't a lot of real estate on Earth that a fox can't claim. And no fox proves this more than my personal favorite, the Arctic fox. Because this igloo uh, puppy has zero business surviving out here. Not only is it cold enough to get one shot by wind, the Arctic fox also has ops like wolves and polar bears to worry about. And since pretty much anything goes in Satan's ice rink, both of them will not hesitate to eat Satan's a fun-sized fox. Ring. And it really be your own kind, since another unlikely menace to an ice fox's life is the red fox. Because as small Damn. as they are, the red fox is still two to three times bigger than their snowy cousins. Right. And yes, red foxes will 100% murk and eat their weaker relatives if it means surviving. So you'd think it'd be curtains for any pint-sized oh, predator that even tries God. out here. Well, about that. Yeah. Imagine being hungry enough to eat your own cousin. Like Zeus. It's his father. He ate his kids. <laughs> That's different. But didn't Zeus, isn't that like supposedly how Athena was born, right? Like he ate her and then she came out of his forehead his or brain, something? Yeah, he came out of his brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, we're talking about you. Yes. Would you ever eat your own cousin for sustenance? Um, There's I nothing have, else to eat, only I, your cousin. I got to be honest with you guys. I have a ton of cousins. <laughs> I have more, you think of a number? Slightly more than that number. It's a lot of them. Now, the question yeah. is, which cousin? Right. Just one of the ones that's a question mark that next to him. Who are you? Are we even related? Even better. <laughs> chop, <laughs> chop, 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 chop. With the butcher knife. No problem, oh, man. Oh I'm having steaks. And what you do is you take one limb that's not fatal, tie it off. You watch too much Walking Dead. Save them for later. <laughs> Don't think for a second Arctic foxes don't have their tricks too. They'll strategically follow polar bears for miles just to clean off whatever they don't finish. We're talking about a house cat sized fox slipping food from the literal <laughs> biggest land predator on the planet yeah. while also managing to stay far enough to avoid getting their consciousness confiscated permanently. These baby face survivors will even resort to scavenging the polar bear's food except after it's already been digested and taken to South Texas. Yeah, they're a different kind of potty mouth. But the Arctic fox uh. has a secret to never having to miss a meal. These okay. Q-tip terriers have a pantry system where they'll bury any extra food in a network of That's underground so dens, which can stretch smart. across 20 it's so miles. Smart. And it's these food supplies that keeps the Arctic fox's pulse going in the dead of winter. There was even one time where researchers uncovered a fox cellar containing 38 birds, 4 rabbits, and about a dozen eggs. Oh, it's hoarding Whoa. on a thousand, but it's what keeps them euro stepping damn. death and ghosting the Grim Reaper. This cotton-colored canine has one more trick too. Coming in all white helps the glacier jockey cosplay as a snowdrift in order to avoid predators. But once the sun finally makes an appearance like an absentee father on tax day, the longer daylight triggers hormonal changes. Changes that causes them to change coats. What? They go from whiter than a party in the Hamptons to a thinner coat that matches the tundra the Arctic turns into. And it's all these abilities that allows the chameleon of foxes to live That's in one cool. of the most unlivable places on Earth. Right. And so does the smallest fox in the world. On the other Fennec side of the fox. spectrum, the fennec, fennec fox survives fox. in a very different kind of desert. It's the smallest canine in the world and could Look probably get bodied by a chihuahua. Those massive ears are good for three things. Increasing their overall surface area to help keep them cool, the same way elephant ears do. Helping them pinpoint the insects, lizards, and rodents on its grocery list even while they're underground. And for looking absolutely adorable doing it. So like cute. I said, foxes are broken. Especially since fennecs can live off the moisture they get from food and by licking the dew from their dens. Not only that, but their kidneys are actually designed to function off very little actual water. Making this travel-sized really? fox one of the few animals able to survive in the desert without drinking actual water. And as a human, you tap out from life after about three days of a water yeah. fast. In fact, where the fennec fox may never have to drink at all, the average adult should drink about 48 ounces a day. Hydration isn't a problem for a pocket-sized sand pup. Oh, and by the way, since their kidneys are always on desert mode, fennec's fox pee is super concentrated and smells like pee pee lepew. And since foxes will pee on any surface, two hours with a fennec under your roof and your house will yeah. smell like a skunk orgy. Oof. So don't try to make them into pets. They are wild animals and they stink. Are you talking to yourself? No. When you edit the video, you can hear yourself telling yourself that. 
<laughs> I already knew that about fennec foxes because I was very interested in them for a very long time. Yeah, don't be confusing them for good pets. You shouldn't confuse them for a pale Thanks. fox either. That's offensive to them. They look similar, but the pale fox is slightly bigger, has a smaller range, and is overall the less clouded dupe of the fennec. And if you take a quick trip a couple hundred miles down south, you'll find the bat-eared so. fox. Unlike the rest of the fox huh. family, their meal plan contains almost entirely insects, with most of their protein coming from termites. Though satellite dish ears allows it to eavesdrop on termite affairs before it packs them. They've even gone ahead and invested in extra teeth to help with their termite terminating tendencies. Bat ears also act on fox like by living in packs, usually made of a mating pair and their children, kind of the same way wolf packs work. It's like a fox that slept through the lecture on how to fox 101, which actually makes a lot of sense since technically bat eared foxes aren't true foxes. There are 12 species that earn the title of true fox, and four of them we've already mentioned. The red okay. fox, the arctic, the fennec, yeah. and the yeah. pale fox. Right. Another true fox is the Tibetan fox. Look, no, I'm serious. That's exactly what they look crazy. like. It's like a reborn human realizing reincarnation ain't always sweet. Or like nature got drunk and tried redrawing foxes right. strictly from memory and then uploaded it as a dare. It's the only animal able to side-eye you while looking you dead in the face. A picture's worth crazy. a thousand words, and every image of a Tibetan fox tells a story of apathy, indifference, and a splash of contempt. You see like the Tibetan fox and you understand why so many cultures had legends about foxes like being sneaky and untrustworthy. <laughs> Just look at that face. Look at that face. I don't trust that face. It looks like I'm going to tell him a secret. He's going to turn and tell it while I'm watching. Immediately. Don't tell Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl, he told me not to tell you. But fuck him, first of all. I ain't fuck with him the second I saw him. Look how I was looking at him. God. Oh, God. Now you might be wondering why this fox looks like ah. an AI-generated Renaissance painting. Some say it's to help them cope with a windy environment. Some say it's because their skulls are specialized for carnivory. I say God or nature, whoever did this to them, has a twisted sense of humor. Evidently, the Tibetan fox does not. Also, you know the whole coyote badger team up that we all love so much and can't get enough of? Apparently, the Tibetan fox has the same type of arrangement with Himalayan brown bears, where the bears will dig out pika burrows, that's a pika, and force them to run on land, where they get chased down by the fox. The fox isn't the digger the bear is, but the fox has better foot speed, so like any true dynamic duo, they cover each other's weaknesses. Even if one of them looks allergic to oxygen. I'm gonna run through a couple <laughs> more foxes real quick. We have okay. Blanford's fox, found in the Middle East and Central Asia. They're easily the goats of foxes, That's able to so scale anything cool. short of 90 degrees and able to do the equivalent of a 10-foot box jump by leaping onto ledges. There's the Kit Fox of the Southwest, also known as the San Joaquin Fox, and they're basically the American edition <laughs> of the Fennec Fox. Fox. You can't forget about the Corsac Fox of the Mongolian Steppe and Central Asian deserts. Okay. Then you got the Cape Fox of South America, and the slightly bigger Indian-based Bengal Fox. I was not kidding, unless your neighbors with the cast of Happy Feet, there's likely more foxes in your area than hot singles just dying to meet you. Foxes come in so many forms that they even have their equivalent of a shiny Pokemon. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Cross Fox. It's actually That's a red fox with partial sick. melanism. You know, the same thing that turns leopards and jaguars into black panthers. They're right. more common in Canada, where up to a third of the red fox population has That's this bimelanated cool. alternate skin. And even rarer than them are silver foxes, which is just a red fox with complete melanism, gang. It's just a hot old guy. <laughs> It's a hot old man. You're so stupid. That's what my husband's going to be. Aw, thanks, babe. It'll be hot when you're old. Hopefully you can't tell when I get old. Hopefully <laughs> there's like a blurred line between when I get old. I We already know from the... Is it still in there? We already know I from the... I got one on my chin. From the gray hairs that you get that you're literally going to be like a silver fox. Like your hair is iridescent. Like the whole like yeah. strand gets yeah. gray. It's gray. It's yeah. fantastic. It's like not gray. Silver. Like shines in the light. I'm so bitter. I'm so salty. <laughs> I'm so salty. Because yeah, red foxes aren't always red. Like I said, foxes exist in many forms. But there's one final form not even they saw coming. Pets. That's right, there's a population of domestic foxes in the world as we speak. Basically, the lore goes this guy, Dmitry Belyaev, asked a question. How did we go from this apex predator to a lap dog? So he and graduate Ludmila Trut tried to see if they could replicate the wolf domestication process, except with foxes. They created a fox farm with 100 vixens and 30 males, and which foxes got to mate depended on which ones were the most tolerant of humans. The got most human-friendly foxes fornicated, and this process repeated itself with the next generation. Essentially, they were selecting for traits that would make them the most fit for human Digging advantage. The hell out of that. And God as the experiment damn. wore on, the foxes went from not fearful of people, to tolerant of people, to actively seeking out people. Later generations would develop an affinity towards humans, sniffing and licking people, and even replacing the aggressive yips and shrieks with more passive whimpers and pants. 
But what we weren't expecting was, as their personalities and attitudes towards people changed, so did their bodies. The more people-friendly huh. foxes sported droopy ears and curled up tails, which yeah, is pretty different from the upright like ears and downwards yeah. pointed tails of their wild cousins. And after decades of successfully playing God with foxes, we now live in a world where you can adopt and own a pet silver fox. He didn't, there's downsides. There's gotta be downsides. There's, there's gotta be downsides. I, my, my, I'm waiting for the downsides. Now here's There's a part no of the video way. where I tell you why you ain't ready for that. They poop uh, and wait. pee everywhere, and there isn't a surface in their uh, house they can't get to. You little shit. They scream, especially at night. You'll be finding out what the fox says while you're trying to count <laughs> shit. Not to mention you're probably gonna sacrifice furniture for their happiness. Break lines. That combination adds up to a good chance you're up at 3 a.m. cleaning fox feces off the top of your fridge while cursing yourself for not just getting a hamster. You can probably find a way to make it work if you do the research and you're committed enough, but, and I'm gonna say this as many times as it's applicable, if you're that willing to sacrifice your sleep, sanity, and social life for a scream, pooping to ratio of a creature have a just have children because yeah. foxes are great wild animals but they can really be some mid as hell pets but that's gonna do it for this video friendly reminder that i do have a book out it's called 100 animals that can redacted kill you link in the description if you're interested shout out to arab for sponsoring this video shout out to you all for watching this video drink water wear sunscreen touch grass hug your parents and i'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Oh yeah all happy right. birthday so we're not getting a fox. No, I'm not, dude, I'm not cleaning up anyone's shit. Nobody's shit. You better not get old anytime soon. I'm not clean up yours either. What about the baby, when we have a baby? You better find a way. You want me to potty train it our two It better muscle? find a way. Fucking loose neck and everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time. Thank you so much for joining me, husband. It's always lovely to have you. Mm -hmm. You're always welcome. Well, thank you. Um, don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's skinless. Let's go!